The voice of God calls us to awaken him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate our lives ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake, Awake and ready. ready. Let's pray together. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Friend, beloved God, Friend, beloved God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya. Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, we humbly bow at thy feet. We humbly bow at thy feet. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, fill our bodies with thy strength and courage. Fill our bodies with thy strength and courage. That we may share thy strength and courage with all. That we may share our strength and courage with all. Fill our minds with thy faith and devotion. Fill our minds with thy faith and devotion. So that we may share thy faith and devotion with all. So that we may share our faith and devotion with all. And fill our souls with thy kindness and compassion. Fill our souls with thy kindness and compassion. That we may share thy kindness and compassion. With all. That we may share thy kindness and compassion with all. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Now let's have a chant. The first chant is I want only thee. Be only the
observe meditation. Sitting upright, focusing our attention at the point between the eyebrows. Inhale and tense the entire body. Exhale, throw the breath out. Inhale and tense. Exhale and relax. One more time. Relaxing all parts of body, mind, and soul, being completely present in this moment now, focusing all of our attention at the point between the eyebrows, calling out to the divine, reveal thyself, reveal thyself.
remaining in a meditative state. Let's say our affirmation for self-healing. This week's topic is willingness. Willingness must be cultivated deliberately. It is an attitude of mind and depends not on outward conditions. Most of them are unwilling, depending on their likes and dislikes. This habit tends to develop a bias toward unwillingness, which gradually becomes chronic and attracts to itself chronic failure. Don't wait for favorable circumstances to awaken willingness in you. Train yourself in the attitude of saying yes to life. By this simple attitude, you will find success arriving unexpectedly at your door. We'll say our affirmation now together five times, starting first aloud with intention and focus at the point between the eyebrows, then a little more softly but still with deep concentration, then in a whisper, then silently, and then taking it ever deeper within, silently again from the superconscious. I welcome everything that comes to me. I welcome everything that comes to me. As an opportunity for further growth. As an opportunity for further growth. I welcome everything that comes to me. I welcome everything that comes to me. As an opportunity for further growth. As an opportunity for further growth. I welcome everything that comes to me. As an opportunity for further growth. Silently now, I welcome everything that comes to me as an opportunity for further growth. I welcome everything that comes to me as an opportunity for further growth. Pray with me silently. Lord, help me to overcome the satanic pull of unwillingness. The more I embrace life in your name, the more I feel your joy. Amen. Peace. Amen. Our weekly readings are taken from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. This week's reading, To Each According to His Faith. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. In the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, we read, Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. It is a common experience shared by most people that when a person errs, he experiences a desire to hide that error from his conscience instead of holding it up for purification. Error clutches its misdeeds to itself and resists correction, though it is only in the state of purity that we can achieve perfect freedom. It requires an act of will to offer that awareness up to the light and to hold it there until one's inner darkness is completely dissipated. For every state of consciousness has its own attractive power. And the more we allow that attraction to act upon us, the more we attract to ourselves the objective circumstances and experiences natural to it. Our faith is the attractive power of our underlying state of consciousness. Goodness attracts goodness. It takes goodness even to see goodness. Evil attracts evil, and it takes evil even to see evil, that is, to take special note of its existence. Whatever there is in you of darkness or light, offer it up to the heights. In the supreme light alone, we will find salvation. Accept nothing less in yourself as the lasting reality. As the Bhagavad Gita says in the 12th chapter, cling thou to me, clasp me with heart and mind, so shalt thou dwell surely with me on high. But if thy thought droops from such height, if thou beest weak 
to set body and soul upon me constantly. Despair not, give me lower service. Seek to reach me, worshiping with steadfast will. And if thou canst not worship steadfastly, work for me, toil in works pleasing to me. For he that laboreth right for love of me shall finally attain. But if in this thy faint heart fails, bring me thy failure. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome everyone. My name is Naiswami Hanuman and we are here with my wife Naiswami Mari and we want to thank Joanne for being our camera person and Cindy for playing our chants today. I wanted to start with a, uh, a poem that I came upon. It's called The Unbroken by Roshani Ray. There is a brokenness out of which comes the unbroken, a shatteredness out of which blooms the unshatterable. There is a sorrow beyond all grief which leads to joy, and fragility out of whose depths emerge strength. There is a hollow space too vast for words through which we pass with each loss, out of whose darkness we are sanctioned into being. There is a cry deeper than all sound, whose serrated edges cut the heart as we break open to the place inside which is unbreakable and whole while singing, while learning to sing. I think that uh, poem gives us an idea of exactly what it is like to go towards self-realization. And during this time, we're getting lots of opportunities to move in that way. I attended a virtual meeting with my hospice mentor this last week. Um, and just as an aside, Having all this free time, we get this opportunity to share, to be around all these wonderful people, more than we were ever before. We get to watch Joe Tish and Davey and Asha and just people all around the world that are so wise and giving us so much uh, inspiration. So that's a good part of what we are experiencing. But we don't want to waste it. So I attended this uh, virtual meeting with there's about a couple hundred healthcare workers that work primarily in hospice. And so within a hospice team, you have a doctor, a nurse, an aide, a social worker, a chaplain. And together as a team, you work with people that are on hospice, people that are, are dying. And the, uh, the mentor asked, well, how are people coping? How are their practices helping them? And one of the people that spoke was over 60 years old. And she said, you know, I'm feeling angry because I was told to go home out of concern for my safety. I didn't want to go home. I wanted to serve. It's very frustrating. Imagine how many people out there that have been told that they cannot work. We have the same issue with the social worker, with the whole team, really. But the social worker, their primary job is to make sure that a family dynamics are working out okay and that um, food and shelter are being taken care of. All of this has to be done by phone. And the same with the nurse and the, uh, and the aide. They, their job is 
medically oriented. Uh, but again, most of the time now, they have to do it from a telephone. Now, an aide can't really do their job uh, without going out and doing personal care. So my guess is, is that they're still doing that. There, there's got to be some fear around that or a great amount of faith, which we're going to be talking a lot about today. And then there's the chaplain. Now, the chaplain's job is to be offer spiritual solace. Now, imagine that you're a chaplain in New York City. How many times did you have to give last rites virtually to how many people? To me, it's, it's a little overwhelming. And that's just a hospice team. And we're not even talking about all the people that are in the emergency room, all the people that are serving and delivering goods. It's just a time for certainly the opportunity for overwhelm. And I am so grateful that we have tools to overcome this overwhelm. But at the same time, I think it's very important for us as yogis to use this time you know, to deepen our practices, deepen our faith, so that when we are out um, at, or when we are on the phone, that we can give confidence, faith, and courage as support. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how that happens. All this loss is pointed to a radical insecurity and helplessness of many, many people. People are worried about the possible recession that's going to be, could possibly be greater than the depression that happened in the past. There's also concerns about global instability and how that's going to play out. These are all very real concerns, whether you see it or not. In your discussions with your friends and family, we can't discount their concerns by saying, God will provide, or it's our karma. It, that's just not going to be enough. There's many people that don't believe that. And even though we do, and that's our faith background, and between ourselves, perhaps, we're feeling strong, still remember, we are all human beings, and we are all affected by what's going on. And to be aware of what we're saying, and how we're saying it, and how we are serving each other and those people that just come into our lives, our neighbors or the person that comes to the door for some sort of service or delivery, the kit, the cashier people, just a, a thank you for being there um, wouldn't hurt. And I'm sure that many of us are doing that. You know, the event, of 9-11, on that particular day, everybody knew in an instant that life had changed as we knew it. But this pandemic, it's fast in its consumption of life and liberties. And it's also slowly eating away at people's false sense of security. Now we've talked about this in the past. Asha's done some wonderful talks on the false sense of security. And we understand that our security is in God alone. But again, not everybody understands that. And how important it is for us to strengthen our own resolve, our own practices, so that when the opportunity arises, that we can be there and bear witness and support others where they are right now. People are going to 
have to become stronger, brighter, more courageous with their love. Remember why we're here, to awaken and to serve. It is said that all time is wasted that is not spent seeking God. Seek Divine Mother in every encounter you have. Make the most of those telephone calls, those teleconferences, and those masked encounters with strangers, all trying to get out and feel a little fresh prana of nature. Awaken to the light that burns in every soul brightly. Let go of fear and loss and cling to God's light, love, and joy. Yes, joy, for underneath the worst situations there is always an ocean of joy that we all are a part of. We are all connected to that joy. It is that kind of faith and courage that we all want to radiate in order to serve those lost in the delusion of life as it is right now. In our readings today, we're told that our faith is, attract, is an attractive force for, underli for underlying state of consciousness. Let me say that again. Our faith is the attractive power of our underlying state of consciousness. Think about that. The underlying state of consciousness is built on faith. So that's one thing that, and what builds faith? Faith is built by experience. And for the yogi who's been practicing, even for a relatively short period of time, you start to refine your intuitive soul. You start to see past the physical. And you see just how much of this greater God is a part of our life. Every day there's experiences of this. And for the yogi, though we see those experiences whether large or small, but not everybody does. So we build our faith, but we also have to pass that faith on. And you don't do it necessarily through words. It's a vibration. And if yogis know anything, they know about vibration. And so we want to remember that when we're around others. We're not going to be in this uh, sheltered state forever. And whatever comes forth after the sheltered state, uh, yes, it would be, you know, right now we've got less pollution and the, uh, the earth is not trembling as much and they're seeing parts of the Himalayas of villagers haven't seen before. This is fantastic. But remember, this life is temporal. Life will go on. And at some point, people are going to be dealing with their struggles. You know, those 90 days of getting your payments, they're going to end. Um, you're going to hopefully be able to go back to work, but you're going to be behind. It's not, there's there's a vast amount of uncertainty that we have to face day by day. And the only way we can really do that is in the moment. But remember, there's a lot of people that just don't know that. And so there might be a lot of behavior of unsettledness, um, anxiety, fear, and anger. And remember, what people have been going through. If people kind of fly off the handle, just send them prayers and um, don't react. We'll talk a little bit more about that also. So when we're talking about, so all this takes amount of willpower, and certainly this is part of what the topic was today, is willpower and willingness. 
And in order to have willpower, you have to have willingness. The willingness is often brought about by suffering. You know, if you don't, if you haven't experienced suffering or you haven't seen suffering, then you don't necessarily have a reason to use your willpower for anything. Life's looking pretty good. Uh, in, in living in a uh, sheltered situation, life can be looking pretty good. But in this greater reality, by understanding a little bit about what's going on around us, we begin to want to have a sense of willingness. We want to engage our willpower. We want to make a difference in this world. But it's going to take a certain amount of willingness. Recently, I had the opportunity to listen to Mary Kretzmann's Healing Prayers. And on, it, she's the, the head of a Healing Prayer Council for Ananda Worldwide. And once a week, she does Healing Prayers. And so I attended one. And I thought to myself, how can one hold such suffering? Because all these are healing prayers. They're all for people that are suffering in one way or another. And obviously the answer came to me that uh, you can't hold on to suffering. Just as you can't hold on to love. You have to allow both suffering and love to pass through you and be expressed through you. It's, if you hold on to love, or you hold on to suffering, what's the outcome? Usually there's going to be some sort of a physical or emotional outcry in your body or mind. Uh, and you're going to be unhappy. So, you know, oftentimes I'm, I'm thinking of John Wayne or one of those old movies where uh, you know, the cowboy's just kind of stoic in his pain and that kind of thing. Um, a certain amount of that perhaps is appropriate, but really, if you don't feel what's going on in a person that you're talking with, if you're not there with them in that moment, if you're thinking about how you're going to respond to what they're saying to you, even before they're done, you're not there with them. And this is something that we learn just in meditation alone. When we meditate and we offer ourselves up to the divine, we're listening. We're listening for spirit. We're listening to the silence. And we come out of meditation with a little bit different perception of the world. So the secret to making this difference is to be in the moment. And when you're in the moment, you are completely involved with an individual. And you have the ability to listen to those whispers from eternity that come to you when you are serving another person or you're with yourself or whatever the situation. Silence and listening are the secret to making changes that are need to be made in the world and in yourself. When you're bearing witness with somebody else, it doesn't mean that um, you have to say anything. It doesn't mean that you don't say anything. It just means that you reflect back to a person what they're experiencing and that you're acknowledging them. You can, through your eyes, through your body language, and perhaps through your words, 
you can be of support to another person. But whatever you do, don't say, I know what you're going through. That never works. Sometimes it's better just to say less and just be there with somebody. Nice Swami Anandi gave us a prayer actually back in 2011, maybe a little bit earlier. But last year, Jyotish and Devi actually had us do this prayer. And the prayer was the Peace and Harmony prayer. And with the Peace and Harmony prayer, you are using this prayer when you are dealt, when you're dealing with either difficult people or difficult situations. And this is a difficult situation. So one of the prayers that I enjoy doing is, uh, and it has to do with the, this prayer, there's two parts to it. Lord, fill this world with peace and harmony. Peace and harmony. Lord, fill this world with peace and harmony, peace and harmony. And then, doing that for about a minute, then for a short period of time, maybe about 15 seconds, or whatever you feel is comfortable, Lord, fill me with peace and harmony, peace and harmony. Lord, fill me with peace and harmony, peace and harmony. Now today, we have a new affirmation that we're working with. The Warriors of Light affirmation. And these two complement one another. Swami says, both Master and Swami have said, that where there is light, darkness will cease to exist. And one way that we can bring that light is through this particular affirmation. I'd like to share it with you now. And it goes, God's light is within me and around me. With the sword of faith in my hand, with the love of God in my heart, I am a warrior of light. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere to overcome fear with faith. Hatred with love and disease with health. Let us fill the world with God's light. Every Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock, Jyotish and Devi, or somebody from, actually it's being done around the world. Uh, just this last week it was Uma in Italy. We say this prayer, we do this affirmation, because this brings this brings us courage and strength, and it connects all of us together. There's another affirmation or song that I particularly came to mind while I was preparing for this. It's a children's song that Swami came up with. It's, um, it goes this way. Move all ye mountains that stand in my way. Nothing can stop my progress. Tall trees fall aside. Every bramble I slash with a sword of freedom. I think I just want to end now with the thought that no matter where you are, and what your circumstances are, that there is, there's people praying for this world, and many people praying for each, many other people through our healing prayers. And that whatever is coming our way, it is going to be a test, it's going to be a challenge, and we have a choice to move into the light, to accept and acknowledge what's coming, what is here, 
and then bravely move into that light and do whatever the next step is for us. For some of us, it's going to be praying, some of us serving, some of us serving and praying. It's going to be a lot of different things. But together, in our ocean of humanity and love, we can overcome this. Now we'll have a reading from our Whispers from Eternity. Whispers from Eternity are um, Paramahansa Yogananda's book of prayer demands and poems. This is reading number 66. In the furnace of trials, the ore of my life is being purified. The fire of experience melts away all my delusions dross. O oh, divine artisan, burn away all my impurities. Bring out in me the steel of endurance and hone it to a fine edge by deep calmness. Forge in me from the tempered steel of mental balance, sharp swords of self-control and firm tenacity. With the weapon of inner equilibrium, teach me to fight every enemy of distraction. Om, peace, amen. Now we'll have some music. The first song we'd like to offer this morning is written by Swami Kriyananda, entitled God's Call Within.
now will bless our offering. We are grateful for your support, which allows us to continue to serve. You can make donations on our website, anondaportland.org. Excuse me, anondaportland.org. You can send checks in the mail, or you can call us to make arrangements for donations. Let's pray together. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, we offer to thee the fruit of our labors. Receive this offering. May it serve as a channel for thy light. To truth seeking souls everywhere. To truth seeking souls everywhere. Om. Om. Peace. Amen. Amen. We have just a couple of announcements this morning. The um, uh, event that Hanuman was talking about that Jyotish and Devi and other leaders around, Ananda leaders around the globe are leading, it's on Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and um, it's Global Healing Prayers. We're calling it Be a, War Be a Warrior of Light, and you can find it by going to ananda.org for further details. And starting this week, on Wednesday nights at 7, Hanuman and our Healing Prayer Ministry here in Portland um, will be starting to do live healing prayer offerings. You can become a part of this by sending your email address to prayers at anandaportland.org and letting us know that you'd like to attend. We'll have our healing prayer now. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Divine Mother friend, beloved God, friend, beloved God, great masters of self-realization, self Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Babaji, Krishna, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashai, Lahiri Mahashai Swami Sri Yukteswar, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda we thank you for your presence guiding our lives. We thank you for your presence guiding our lives. We consciously attract. We consciously attract the power of your compassion. The power of your compassion. Kindness and love. Kindness and love. Make us your warriors of light. Make us your warriors of light. That we may help spread your love into this world. That we may help spread your love into this world. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Go out with joy. <laughs>